but I've never seen a monster workout like Ed. If Ed was doing back, Ed was doing every back movement in the gym, heavier and more reps than you can try. The other day he was uh, training for a competition, super low body fat, come in here and squatted over 800 pounds, like nothing for reps. It's not something common that you see, I think. And you know, if, if you work your ass off and you're the hardest worker on the planet, I mean, how can anybody not respect you? Here he comes, fear! What's it like being married to a bodybuilder? Well, I told him several times, you chose to do this, so, you know, I mean, quit being a little bitch and just suck it up. I had trouble with learning growing up and like Stallone too. I remember I just read some stuff where he had dyslexia and learning disabilities and stuff like that that he worked through and you know wrote all these you know, brilliant scripts like Rocky. Uh, you know and then too he was really into the ways he was never a great athlete but he always had the really nice he had more of a physique look. And then Arnold you know I kind of looked up to him because I was like wow you know they told him in Hollywood he had this long name weird accent you'll never make it but just the determination and you know even James Cameron, I remember in Terminator 2, was saying, you know, Arnold always had to work at it. We'd put the, you know, his lines even on the, the, the readout when he was talking in the car where he'd get all the dialogue rights, everything precise. But he would just, you know, hammer it, keep trying, keep trying. And, and you know, if, if you work your ass off and you're the hardest worker on the planet, I mean, how can anybody not respect you? Those types of people, you know, I just looked up to. And then my dad, when he would try to get me up in the mornings for school, they started noticing things like, man, he's, he's, he's wanting to buy magazines, like Flex Magazine. What they were amazed by was, you know, my, my schools and everything, I had to go to private schools to learn. The classes were smaller, but they see me read these books and cut out the workouts, the pyramid schemes, and then the next thing you know, in, in football, you know, I'm, I'm lifting weights and the coaches are like, dang, Ed wants to do even the heavier weights with the linemen. And he's, you know, a root, technically a running back in junior high. And uh, same thing in high school, uh, we had the overall strength intensity. We had some really talented, bigger athletes that really got a kick out of it because I was kind of like the uh, juggernaut, you know, the littler guy that could get in there and like, goddamn, Ed mentioned, you know, damn near 400 pounds and he's a senior and he weighs 200 and here I am, I'm doing 350 and I, I might be the star tight end that gets a full ride to Kansas named David Hurst that runs a 4640, but this is impressive, you know, that he's, he's excelling at this, so. I think he's an amazing athlete. Um, we love him as a trainer because he has so much knowledge and information to give, and he gives it in a way where people can kind of absorb it instead of sounding like a book. <laughs> Uh, he's definitely uh, something to keep up with as far as his uh, energy goes. I think he's, um, like I said, he's, he's a very unique personality. He's just a very, I keep saying unique because that's the only word I can think of to describe Ed. You know, he's this person that like, you've never seen anything like it before. His personality is just... Just make sure to take your mood stay pleasure. <laughs> what it is, man. You either understand it or you don't. <laughs> Arnold! 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 I'm the more comical one out of the two of us, for sure, and he's the more serious one, so I think that um, we balance each other out. As you can tell, I mean, he's so serious. Like grass, we're gonna go weed in my mom's basement, in the basement. After high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I didn't have the, you know, I had good enough grades to pass, but I wasn't exactly like, you know, I'm going to community college, and I'm like, okay, you, you can take English comp, but you gotta take remedial math. You're, 
mass a little rusty. So it's like I go there for a semester and then they have this thing, the Shawn Michaels Wrestling Academy and friends are like, man, you ought to go try out for that shit. You know, it was not like tough enough, but we're for WWE or WWF at the time was tied in. And I go to the school and it was probably one of the hardest things I've ever done. And it looks like he's about to crush. Thank you, little punk. Russian is finished. Oh my God, busted across the face of Martin Styles. You know what? This is bone crusher land. It sure so I did that for a few years. And I could have kept working to try and get like a developmental contract, but I knew that with my height, uh, you know, it'd be harder because I'd have to take a lot of bumps. I had a great gimmick with the whole convict get up and I was always into theatrics too. I loved theater arts, loved acting and stuff like that. I just watching movies, I just love drama, you know? And that's the neatest part about pro wrestling is everybody talks about it being, you know, fake and staged. Uh, I was like, I, anybody who wants to go through school, like where you gotta learn how to take bumps in that ring, I mean, if people think it's fake, then maybe tell that to the kid and the family uh, when he broke his neck trying to learn how to take a backdrop. You know, like, it's very rough. Uh, when they when they do stuff, you know, and put together matches and everything, you still got to be in the right spot at the right time. If, you, if you're not in shape either and you drop somebody on your head, their head, I mean, you got to put a lot of trust in the other person. And, That was a very fun experience for me, was learning from Shawn Michaels on how to tell a story. You know, like, you got a heel and a baby face. Let's see you go out there and entertain the crowd. Let's see people get into it. And some of the best matches that I had for PCW and for his promotion, TWA, Texas Wrestling Alliance, were the ones that I lost because the crowd was so into it. And, you know, it's the thing. is like, if you're a bad guy, they better be booing your ass. If you're a good guy, they better cheer you. And that actually helped later in the bodybuilding too, uh, even with this gas videos, because you could tell I can play the whole character get up uh, to where I, you know, get into it, do the voiceovers and Priest. I think that's probably another reason why he liked training with me as well, because I was goofy, you know, I could do voices and stuff when he was all dieted down. I learned it from Lee Bloody Priest. It's, it's called pre-exhaust training. You start with a leg extension, mate, and you do about 15 to 20 reps. Then don't be a fucking wanker, because you're only using 315, but you got to do 100 reps in a row. But his whole uh, process behind a lot of reps with less weight for hypertrophy on legs and also getting more definition to pop out was also the reason it's good as to save your joints. He used to always talk about Ronnie Coleman being a freak of nature and it was impressive, but nobody was ever gonna touch him. If you wanna be able to hang around for a while and compete, stuff like this also helps too. Even off season, in season, cause you're getting a cardio benefit as well. Like I say, you know, it's just, it was fun. Great bodybuilding has been a great experience for me doing all the shows and uh, dieting, you know, the, the whole process. It definitely helps having a wife now with the support um, backbone. Uh, she's been there and helped me look the best I've ever looked with the food. He's the bitch in the relationship. I'm the backbone. <laughs> Eddie, the best thing about him is probably his motivation. I'll knock out 425 for a set of three and he'll walk up and be like, so what's up, 550 next month? Or something like that. He always believes in you more than you believe in yourself and generally likes to see other people succeed. Like I say, just that, that feeling of being able to be really good at something. Uh, and when you're really good at something, you want to try harder and improve and get better and better and better. And that's what sucks for some people. You know, when I have clients too, they're weight loss and, you know, they're starting from being chronically obese, 400 pounds, and they even lose down to 330. And you know, they're like, man, I lost 70 pounds. They go to the doctor and all, oh, you still need to lose more weight. What do I do? I'll put 600 pounds on the, the blocks, you know, and then Big Mike Canal's pulling it for rep. He's like, man, I didn't know I could do that. I'm like, well, look how big you are, you're strong. And everybody always focuses on their weak points and always try to build them up. Like, like a lot of people don't um, appreciate um, you know, what they have and, and what they're, they're capable of and they just give up on themselves way too easy. And they're so talented. I think Branch Warren, I could totally identify with what he's saying because he even looks out for other people. Like he's not even selfish. Like, man, they, you should not be, I should not be beating you. I'm just out working your ass. You're not trying hard enough. <laughs> Anybody 
trying to become an iron addict, the, what I would say is just find your niche on how to make money. And uh, Mike O'Hearn, I remember what he said in a video years ago, and I remember seeing him on the cover of Iron Man magazine when I was in like fourth grade. He said, he asked Joe Weider, what do I need to change? And he said, nothing. Stage is exactly why, just how you are. It, if you notice, he never worried about becoming like an IFBB professional, but he had such an awesome build, physique, Looks like a damn superhero being 6'4", 6'5". Then he went on to make the American Gladiators, the Titan, uh, which is very hard to do. I think even Chris Cormier, who's a well-established IPB professional, got cut doing that. So, like I say, it's all about finding your niche, you know? Get in where you fit in.